This work looks to understand the adversarial vulnerability of deep CNNs by taking a closer look at how they respond to their inputs. To begin, let's take this network and network C for 10 architecture, discard the softmax, and focus on the output of the layer before it. These are class scores, how much the net thinks that the class corresponding to each node is present in the input. Now let's input this dog image. The node representing the dog class has the highest score, so the net's prediction is correct. What if we blend in this special pattern? How do the class scores change? First, observe in the top right how the perturbed image changes as the perturbation scaling factor S varies over the chosen range. Let's do that again, but this time, look down at how the output class scores change as that scaling factor varies. The frog class score increases monotonically with the magnitude of the scale surpassing all other scores, including the dog score. So the network thinks this is a frog. There's nothing special about this particular dog image. The same thing happens with this dog, or for that matter, with nearly any other image in this data set, except for frogs, which don't change their identity. This trend is evident at the population level. Here are the class score percentile lines for the entire data set as a function of the scaling factor. Frog score in red, highest scoring non-frog in blue. Notice the crossover of the curves. In other words, this is a frog class targeting universal adversarial perturbation. This is just one example. We can identify a family of patterns that move predictions towards or away from any given class or have no effect on class identity at all, and we can do it on whichever network. In fact, we can think of image spaces being spanned by bases of patterns like this, and think of the basis vectors as ordered by the strength of their class association. For example, weakest to strongest on this x-axis. This curve gives the mean L2 norms of the deep fool perturbations of this data set as a function of the subspace onto which they're projected. We can see from the graph that they lie almost entirely in a small subspace of high strength directions. Not surprising, since these were our most adversarial directions. So to defend against attack, why not throw these directions away? Well, there's a big problem with that. Let's plot the net's classification accuracy when the input data is confined to exactly the same subspaces. Here's the train accuracy, and here's the test accuracy. If we reverse the ordering of the directions, strongest to weakest now, we notice the same association between the adversarial directions and the directions used for classification. Some defense methods have suggested projecting away directions of the input data. This curve traces the mean norm of a deep fool attack suitably confined to each subspace relative to the norm of the original uncompressed deep fool. Even with as few as 10,000 remaining ImageNet directions, at which point AlexNet is essentially unable to classify accurately at all, we are still able to fashion very effective low norm attacks in the confined space. For all the details, read the paper or come by a poster.